So I know you may be like, that's it, that's the big secret, this video is worthless. See ya! But so often we overlook the basic foundations of our personal style. And we end up thinking if we just find out our Kibi ID or if we just buy this one garment, then all of our style problems will be fixed. And that couldn't be further from the truth. And I have to tell you this, but your style is a set of foundational blocks. And it's kind of like a pilgrimage. Oregon Trail, anyone? Because you're carrying all the information that you gathered here to the next phase of your life and you're re-examining, re-honing, and adjusting the input that you have and evolving your personal style as you grow. But in order to survive and dare I say thrive on this pilgrimage, you need to have the essentials in place. So if your wardrobe is overstuffed with pieces you never wear, you don't know style principles, and you haven't learned how to evaluate an outfit properly, then the journey is going to feel a lot more treacherous than it has to. This video specifically will show you how to start building your style expression and how to start understanding an authentic personal style. Because my intro really said it all, your personal style is you. So what is style expression? We all know the value in personal style and expressing ourselves in an authentic manner, but what does personal style even mean? And you have all these aesthetics floating around in your brain being recycled in through your closet and expressed out into the world, but what even is your personal style? Is it the style you wear today, right now, in real life? Is it the fashion that your lifestyle needs? Or is it the style that you like the best? What is personal style? In my personal opinion, personal style can be defined as the following. Symbol, which is a visual, plus experience slash expression. Is it an art form? Absolutely, but it's an art form that's similar to something like fashion design or architecture, where form and function have to meet in the middle. And we also have this element of manipulation. We take an aesthetic and we manipulate it to reflect our own expression. We are manipulating how people read us by using our clothes. It's a tool. We are using our forms and our clothes to express our truest self in an authentic manner. So we are manipulating the symbols to reflect our own expressions and experiences. And eventually we just want to evolve this conversation to have beautiful flow or a witty banter. And every piece of clothing that we add or remove impacts the expression. Is it more nuanced? Is it satirical? Is it comical? Is it serious? All these pieces help to form the self-expression that we're aiming for. And you know when you have those conversations with some, someone and it just goes back and forth and back and forth and it just flows easily and you feel like you understand the person and they see who you are. That is what our communication and our fashion should be doing for ourselves, And that is what our personal style should be accomplishing as well, without words. And you may be thinking, well, this is all well and good, but I have a work dress code to wear, or I am a mom chasing a toddler, so I can't have this daily style expression every day. And the reality is that is so overlooked is that we contain multitudes. You don't have personal style, you have personal styles. And I'm not saying there shouldn't be a continuity between the looks, but you get to decide how that continuity expresses itself. That's why looking at style inspiration or doing a copy paste outfit experience needs to be evolved at a certain point. It's a great foundational step when you're just exploring personal style and trying to figure out what you like, but eventually you need to add the spice that is you. We want to examine how you engage in life and how life unfolds through you. But you have to understand that this is a pilgrimage and it can take some time to gather your style data, understand what you like, understand different style systems, and accumulate the data, evolve it, and slowly translate it into a regular style expression that you can rely upon. And once you start to do that, it becomes very easy to see, okay, this is how I translate it into my work dress code, or this is how I translate it into my going out look. But when you're kind of in the messy middle and you're getting a lot of new input and you're just sorting through that information, it can feel like everything is very disparate. But don't worry, that is part of the pilgrimage. Eventually you develop this hindsight perspective where you can zoom out and see all your different personal styles and all your different style expressions and how you'd like to communicate and things just begin to flow. 
there are many different points along your style journey and they actually repeat as you hit different junctures in your life. Phase one, where you're collecting information, you're learning about style systems or color palettes or understanding style lines, or whether you're in the messy middle, you understand kind of what you want in your style toolbox, you're starting to learn how to apply it, but there's still a lot of trial and error that's kind of throwing you off or making you feel like you're unsure of your decisions. Or maybe you're in phase three, which is kind of the state of flow. The state of flow is what we aim for, but with each new phase of our pilgrimage, we may lose that in place of exploration and new input. This way it evolves our style from, let's say, five years ago to today, and from today to five years from now. So it's a constantly evolving process. We want to hit phase one, phase two, and then phase three. And then we hit a new juncture in life and we repeat phase one, phase two, phase three. But it gets a little bit easier because all of our information begins to compound. If you're wondering where the state of flow comes from, I'll explain it. The state of flow, which is a concept that applies far outside of style, is a mental state described in this book, where there becomes a wave of intense focus that leads to an almost ecstasy-like feeling and a true sense of clarity. You see the big picture and you truly understand how to move from one moment to the next. And there's a sort of adrenaline-like push to make these decisions because you are sure of them. Getting to a state of flow in personal style requires you to engage with your style on a daily basis. And it does have a lot of challenging steps because you have to get from phase one to phase two. And you can't just accumulate education. You actually have to execute and try things out. And this is where most people fail. And this is not always a relaxing process, which is why when we get overwhelmed by it, we end up just doing an adrenaline quick fix shopping trip and buying something we will probably only wear once because that's easier than being in that messy middle and, and trying things out that don't work. Now, traditionally flow state happens when you are in the zone and you can just focus on one activity, but most of us cannot spend our entire days thinking about our fashion problems. But what I want us to achieve is bite-sized states of flow. I want us to engage with our style every day, organizing your wardrobe, setting up a closet system that works for you, taking your daily outfit videos or photos, engaging with your style every day so that that effort is easy to accomplish every day. This engagement sets us up for a larger state of flow eventually, and we can take a critical eye to our styles on where they live today and where they need to be in the future based on our own style expression. And that's why I created the self-guided personal style workbook, which helps you analyze your outfits and your preferences and kind of explore all the data you have rumbling around in your brain and start to streamline it into a state of flow for your personal style. Start to define what really matters. Your personal style is not a project that will ever feel done. And it's probably gonna look something more like this. You have an amazing understanding of your own personal style expression and you start to hit peaks of flow when you're building an outfit, it won't feel overwhelming to be invited last minute to a dinner and, you know, build an outfit for that. You know, we want outfit building to be simple, but it takes a lot of steps to get there. Now let's talk a little bit about style education. So in this video towards the end, I talk a little bit about overfitting your style and how we can get stuck in a trap of style education where we want to learn every single style system out there and then apply it all into our personal style expressions. That one of these systems is gonna have the key and I just need to accumulate all the knowledge and then I will have great personal style, but that's not quite how it works. Education without execution is one of the biggest pitfalls that people experience when they're learning about style systems and style lines and body types and all of these different style principles that are very important to understand, but at some point you have to execute. In this video, I will talk about how to properly store information that is important to your style education. However, you can't just collect, 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 because there's not going to be one system or one piece of advice that solves all of your style problems for you you will have pieces of advice that really turn a light bulb on for you, you, but that's not the key to personal style. That is the key to your foundational building blocks. So when we think of personal style, we also think of creativity, or we should be. 
And I love the definition of creativity that is divergence and convergence. So divergence is the collection of all the information. You're learning the style systems, you're taking in color analysis, you're trying to, to understand the theories behind style principles, but you don't get the creative IP until you reach the convergence stage. Convergence forces us to eliminate options, actually. It's deciding what is the essential information, what are the trade-offs that I can make, how can I streamline this to be exactly what I need. So no matter what style system you prefer, part of it is eliminating the noise that isn't helping you. The information or rules that don't apply or don't meet your lifestyle or don't speak to you in an authentic way. It is okay to not take every single piece of advice. That is how we hone our own personal style recipes or build our own personal style toolboxes. Fashion and these style systems are not meant to be prescriptive. They are meant to be personal. They are meant to be tools that you personally make decisions for on how to apply. Along this pilgrimage, it is wonderful to set up little, you know, benchmarks or smaller goals like, I would love to be able to get dressed in less than five minutes each morning, but be mindful of the larger scale pilgrimage that you are on. I know you may be thinking, when do we get to the actionable steps? But I promise you, this is all worth hearing. Consumption of aesthetic. We are in a constant stage of new input. We are scrolling our phones, we are listening to podcasts, we are viewing advertisements, we're in a loop on social media. It's all information that is being piled into our brain of aesthetics. And honestly, the fashion trend cycle can't keep up, which is why we're seeing a shortened trend cycle of things going in and out of season much more quickly than they used to. There is a great episode by a financial content creator called Money with Katie, and um, I'll link the podcast below, and it's called The Hot Girl Hamster Wheel, and it deals a little bit more with beauty consumption, but I think it's equally applicable to fashion style. We are pressured into adopting these new experiences and almost bullied into believing that if we buy this one item, then we will have perfect personal style and will love how we look. It becomes a societal standard of personal style expression and you're informed of it every 60 to 90 days on what you need to now achieve. And I'm not saying that you can't try these trends or explore these aesthetics, but what I am saying is that you should reach a personal state of flow in your personal style so that you know how to apply them in an authentic manner or you know how to vet a trend to see if it's something that you actually want to pursue or if you've just been bullied into it because you're on the hot girl hamster wheel. I love this series by Picasso entitled The Bull and it's a great example of his process of abstraction. He, we see over here that he starts with a very common iteration of a bowl. It has all the shadows, all the shapes of a bowl that we would expect in any drawing class. And as he progresses, he slowly changes his perspective and tries to look at it from a different lens. This first step of learning how to draw the bowl in its truest form is kind of like our education step. It's phase one. It's just learning how do we do this. And as we go through our phase one, phase two, and phase three, we slowly learn what we can take away, what we need to add, what lines will still speak to the image of the bull, but be a more personal expression. And at the end, it's still a bull, but it's a bull from Picasso's point of view. And we recognize it as his artwork. And this can be a very difficult process to do because what you're essentially doing is you're figuring out your own personal style expression or your own personal point of view. What do you want to say to the world? What has formed you? What's important to you as a person? What are the cultural gaps of who you are now and who you want to be? And all of this leads me to personal style maps. The reason you probably came to this video in the first place. So I first introduced personal style map in this video here and there was a set of free resources and worksheets that you could fill out. Those free resources are still available and I've actually added additional worksheets to them. If you already requested the personal style worksheets, you will get an email with all the new additional resources. Or if you haven't started this process yet, you can go ahead and sign up for the free worksheets to be emailed to you below. So this process is bigger than just making a pretty mood board that speaks to the style that you like today. This process is about finding out who you are and how you want to express that. And it can also be about mourning who you thought you might be and recognizing who you falsely pretended to be at some point. This is about really getting to know 
your expressions. All of these pitfalls and experiences help you gain knowledge to progress to the next level. We're just not buying new wardrobes to get to the next level. That doesn't work. That doesn't compound the information that we've gathered on our personal styles. We want to get new input, re-examine, re-hone, and adjust our strategy with each phase in our lives. We wore an outfit, we experienced the visual expression. It wasn't quite working, so we honed it, re-examined it, and adjusted it. And then at a later date, we may call upon that information. We may look back on our style data and see that, okay, here are the style lines I, I gravitate towards easily, or here's the color palette that I really feel my best in. And that knowledge compounds and we apply it to future styles and future wardrobe purchases. So we have fewer outfit misses and we get closer to that state of flow when we're building outfits. Life is a constant funnel of new input coming in and examining or re-experiencing old input. So whether you've tried my personal style mapping system before or not, what I want you to do is start re-experiencing old input because it's important to know where we came from to see where we're going. So we're gonna be start going through the worksheets that I've included in the free resources below and these need to be done before you get to the visual section because this is how you narrow down your self-expression and your perspective. So this first worksheet is loosely based on a style autobiography book by fashion editor Grand Store, but with each chapter in the beginning, she starts it off. I am blank years age and I'm blank. So for instance, she goes, I am 13 and I'm in love with Marcel. And that's where she grieves the experience of trying to get a boy to notice her by changing her style or I am 26 and I'm in love with Zara, how she recounts how Zara forms her personal style and accessibility to items. And I love the simplicity of this and how it kind of takes your older input and simplifies it into one sentence that really changed you or evolved you or was a benchmark for your personal identity. Obviously it's up to you which ages you choose and which influences you choose. And in the worksheet, you'll notice that there are little notes under each of these age sentences so that you can jot down any more formative memories you have. Um, in the free resources folder, you'll also see a folder where I've completed all the exercises and you can see my thought process. Next, we kind of have a deep dive into how we view style, what are our personal rules, what are our style processes, and how do we make our style choices? What do we value? How did we come up with those values? Do we have any personal style rules that we need to feel we need to abide by? This is really kind of a therapy session with your personal style. Therapy, this way for the therapy. How do you approach getting dressed and what influences those decisions? This is that section. Some of the questions might feel a bit abstract to you and you might be thinking like, I just wanna look cute when I go on a date or I actually just want the 12 essentials every closet needs and call it a day. And it depends where you're at in your personal style journey. And it's okay to say, you know, this style therapy session isn't for me, but if you truly wanna find strength through style, then these self reflective questions are really important. The next exercise is all about associations. So we're gonna do a word association and we're gonna do a visual association. So the next worksheet looks like this and it is basically a discoverability of what you value in style and what you value as a person. And it's very simple. It's a brain dump, 20 words that represent you, 20 words that mean something to you. And here's what mine looks like. And the next phase in this exercise is going to be a visual brain dump. And I want you to collect 10 images that speak to you. I don't necessarily want these to be fashion images and I don't want this to be a pretty mood board. What I want it to do is be a visual representation of you. Have you ever just seen an image and been like, oh my God, I am compelled by this image. It, it exudes everything I want. Put that on your board. It can be paintings, it could be music notes, it could be a landscape, it could be a photo of you and your family, whatever you want. These 10 images should just reflect you in the broader sense, not just in the fashion sense. This is about kindling your creativity, starting to think about yourself as a visual symbol. So you may be like, okay, these are a lot of exercises. Come on, Gabby, get to the point. But creativity, 
in its simplest form is looking at things from completely different perspectives and continually changing your perspective and readjusting or re-experiencing what you're looking at. These worksheets and exercises all exist because all of our brains work differently and we all process things differently and we're all going to have a light bulb moment at different junctures. So I can't just say do this one worksheet and you'll have all the answers. I want you to do all these worksheets so that you really look at yourself from a 360 degree perspective and then you start to see this is it. This is, this is the thing that moved my style from here to here. And here's one of the original fashion worksheets, which was the history list. And these are just, it's just a list. It's a simple list of fashion core memories that you've accumulated over the years. It's similar to some of the worksheets we've already done. So you should be compounding your information and honing it a little bit more. And whether you want to say, you know, what my mom wore at Christmas time always, you know, made me smile and I remember it vividly or this character in a movie, she always had such a grand impact on me. Write it down. These are core memories that somehow live in your brain rent free. And we have one more worksheet before we get into the visual portion of this exercise. And that is our brainstorm our personal map brainstorm. Each of these sections, you jot down what inspires you, moves you, informs your opinion. There are spaces to really examine what forms you today, elements like movies, hobbies, idols, morals, feelings, love languages. And I've also included an additional blank map so that you can add in your own categories if you feel like something is missing and you want to think it through. We aren't translating all these elements into fashion symbols yet. What we're trying to get at is what makes you you. What are your core fashion beliefs, processes? What's important in your style expression? We want to learn ourselves so well that when we try a new trend, we know how to get in that state of flow easily, or we know how to build an outfit for any event and still feel like our personal expression is there. Our self identity then becomes ingrained in us and we know how to take new input or temporary input and apply it in an authentic way instead of getting consumed by this trend cycle where we're constantly looking for the next greatest thing. So after you've done all the worksheets and exercises, you really should start to feel a stronger sense of self and point of view. And from there, we're going to move on to the visual representation of this. This whole process is creating a map for your personal style, personal style maps, get it? But there is a visual component. And I like to think of the visual component as a brand board. It's more than just a pretty mood board. It shouldn't be composed of, you know, paparazzi, paparazzi shots of your favorite celebrity or the latest Vogue cover. It really needs to encompass what you stand for and what you want to express. Your boards may change over time depending on what part of your style journey you're in, phase one, phase two, phase three, or whether you're evolving from this transition to this one, but they need to authentically speak to you. So you need to be very particular about what you put on the boards. And we will get into adding new input and organizing new input shortly, but let's explore my brand board first and what each element represents and how it speaks to my style expression. So I updated some of my imagery since my last video. A lot of them have similar sentiment, but j it just felt a little bit more pertinent in this phase of my journey. Style maps are highly personal, so your thought process is the only thing that matters. I switched out my color palette to blues because in my color analysis, I found that blues are really great on me. And I also switched to a blue Rothko instead of a red. I swapped this photo of Jane Birkin and Liv Tyler because I think they epitomize relaxed glamour or free beauty, which was a light bulb style process for me when I was completing my workbook. Then I added this painting with the wave. I resonated with the water and actual ca capacity of it, and I like a bit of power. And I added two more of my recent looks that I think exhibit my current style processes. Most of these other images are the same. The Wes Anderson thumbnail speaks to my personality, a bit awkward, sometimes a bit niche, sometimes too serious, although my YouTube view viewers don't see that side to me. The Moulin Rouge and corsets were from my history list and still remain an important element in my style choices. Flat to fluffy image just reminds me to find my own fluff, oomph, and embrace myself not to follow what everyone else is doing. The beetles and the hand drawings are just reflective of my past and present hobbies and interests. From this board, I found I like to embrace my inner self, my personality, but I value a bit of glamour paired with a natural freedom. So personally, after completing my self-guided personal style workbook, which if you purchased, you have access to my workbook as well, I realized that I needed to rejigger some of my style toolbox elements. And I also started to formulate my shorter term personal style goals that might help me move the needle, move from the messy middle to a better flow state with my outfit building each day. 
everything on your board should represent you from the fonts, the elements, the colors, the images, the vibe, the energy. Think of these boards as like you're building a company and this is the marketing material of sending out and you want people to instantly understand you. This is what that visual process is about. And it doesn't have to stop there. This is kind of a good checkpoint reference for you to have and to, you know, when you're shopping for a new item, refer it back to your brand board and see if it fits in and it vibes seamlessly with it, which is essentially the expression of you. But it doesn't stop there because you're going to get new input. And what do you do with all this? And here's where organizing your new input really comes in handy. So I was reading this book called Building a Second Brain by Tiago Forte, and I was a little frustrated at first because I was like, this is so simplistic. This is just like a organizing note system. Like, how is this really going to help me? Then I realized simplistic processes is what we often overlook. So many people say I have no personal style, yet they refuse to actually go through their wardrobe and do a closet overhaul. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> you are get eliminating the pieces that you don't need. Simplistic advice can sometimes be the biggest game changer and we overlook it because simple advice is not always easy to implement. It's kind of the boring tasks, but you need to do the boring tasks to set yourself up for future success. So how does this relate to the personal style mapping and new input? And the note-taking system that he talks about in this book is similar. It's not glamorous, it's a little tedious at first, but it can really help you organize your new input and help you evolve your style in the long term. So what I want you to do is I want you to go on your phone and create a new note in your notes app and call it whatever you want that's memorable, folder and note. And in this note, as we're going about our days, consuming information, reading Reddit forums, or looking on Pinterest, or even going to the movies or talking with a friend, when something is captivating or engaging to you, I want you to take the five seconds, go into your note and jot it down. Put an image in there if it's an image, put a link if you need the link. What you want to do is you want all of your notes streamlined into one place. These notes can be filled with outfit ideas, icons, thoughts you've had, quotes, music, a video, whatever you like, whatever moves you, whatever you look for and have a visceral reaction to. And, and maybe you don't even know how it's going to relate to your style in the future. Put it in the notes app. But I also want to say that this should not be the same note or folder where you keep your daily outfit photos. That should be in a separate location. This is just for new input. We'll get through sorting it eventually. Now, if you're like, well, you know, my notes app has so many things. I need to have this a little bit better organized. You can also start a Pinterest board entitled the same thing that you entitled your notes and create several different boards within that folder. You could have a style lines board, you could have a garment details board, you could have a clothing color board, and you can have a, I don't know, inspiring input board. And you can periodically save images or videos or whatever you want to those individual boards so you have a little bit more style education, inspiration and input organized there. Data and research eventually leads to expression. So what about the daily outfit photos that I'm always harping on you to take? Those are still very important. Those are the actual execution of all of this data that you've accumulated. This can help you change your perspective on what you see in your style. And it can give you a hindsight perspective, which can be especially helpful when you're trying to find the common threads throughout your outfits. And my workbook can also help you parse through some of that data and see what you're really gravitating towards and what's important to you in your style. But if you want to take it even a step further, you can also try the following exercises. The first is called the try-on experience. You've done a lot of soul searching on who you want to be, but how does that actually look? What does that actually look like in an outfit? It can feel very scary to start expressing yourself out into the world. And that's what this exercise is supposed to help you combat. So basically what you do is you've done the soul searching. Now you're going to try to form some outfits from it because the more you start to see yourself in this new way, the more familiar you will be with it. A lot of people say when they first find their color analysis or their kibby idea or whatever, they're like, oh my God, those colors look horrible on me. I, I can't stand them. But it's because they're not used to seeing themselves. They're used to hiding behind colors instead of like being the first thing people notice. So the, the more you see yourself in this way and the, in an authentic manner, 
the more comfortable you'll get to feel and the more bold you will be about expressing that out into the real world. But it's okay to keep it just in your bedroom for now. Try it on, take a photo, explore the new you. You need to get acquainted with this new you and this new style expression. And it's okay if the growth doesn't always feel linear, if you're stuck in a phase and you're just trying to figure out how to make this style system work for you, or if you're just exploring something and you're not having those immediate results, that's all to be expected. And it's also okay to feel dissatisfied with the results that you're getting, that like you hear these people post on Reddit that like Kibby changed their life and it was the best thing they ever did, and you're just not having that same relationship with it that's okay and to be expected. And you just have to keep chugging through, which is why the try-on experience can help you. So the try-on experience or the visualization experience is to look at your board and just come up with an outfit that speaks to the board. It doesn't have to be one that applies to you in real life. It doesn't have to work for your job or your mom duties or the date you're going on later. Just create an outfit that authentically feels like you. Think about your processes as you're picking these items. Think about your boards and your exercises and your core memories and start to explore. Just create an outfit based on your brand board. Put the outfit on, take a photo or video of it and write down the feelings of this. And it's kind of just a self-reflection. How did I choose these pieces? What do I feel when I wear this? Do, are there any points that I'd like to change? Are there any focal points that I'm being drawn to and that I might want to explore further? Then you're going to do it again and maybe a third time or a fourth time or however many outfits you get going. If you're in a state of flow, just keep going with them. So it's kind of about just throwing spaghetti at the wall and executing some of the education that you've accumulated on yourself. And the more you see yourself in an authentic style expression, the more comfortable you will be expressing it out into the real world. Now, exercise two of the try-on experience is closet is your raw material for your style expression. So organizing or decluttering your wardrobe is a huge part of achieving authentic personal style because if you don't know what you have in your closet or you don't have a good clothing inventory in your brain, how are you going to be able to pull things and get creative with things? Remember, part of creativity is elimination. You need that convergence element. So you've collected a lot of things, now it's time to eliminate what is no longer serving you. So what I said in the intro of this video is actually the key to your personal style. You, you are it. Your gut instincts and your fashion instincts are not as broken as you think. I love this quote by Picasso. Every child is an artist. The problem is how to remain an artist once we grow up. You know how you want to express yourself. Deep down, you know what moves you, what excites you. No one can change that. This is about tapping into those expressions, those things that just like excite you and merging them into an expression with your preferred style system and style education. We want them to combine into one. And it's really easy to get caught up in the input that we're constantly being fed, that we need to look like this aesthetic core. But comparison is not only the thief of joy, but it's a loss of identity. And truly authentic personal style is formed completely on you. So I really hope that you find strength through style and that you let your style unfold through you. And here are my ideas for the next video. Please vote on which one you would like to see next. Until next time. Ooh, boy.